Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jacqueline Lopez, and today we are going to be creating this boho macrame car decor. Basically, it hangs off of your rear view mirror. As always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell so that you're notified every time that I post a new video. The supplies that you are going to need are some macrame cotton cord. This one is labeled natural cord from Hobby Lobby for $6.99. Some scissors, a needle. Um, the rest of the jewelry related items are optional, but they are some jump hoops, some crimp cord, lobster claw, and then some jewelry pliers. You're going to start by cutting four three foot strands of macrame cord and then a smaller one. This one is going to be dependent on the distance of your rear view mirror to your dash. Mine is shorter, so I need mine to be able to open and close in order to attach it, but you can do it long enough so that it loops through the entire rear view mirror. And that is why these next couple of steps are optional. All we are going to do is we are going to add some cord crimps to the end of the cords. It pretty much crimps the edge so that it stops it from unraveling. And then it gives us a place to attach our jump rings. Very easy to use. You just attach it to it, press it um, with your pliers, and it closes it right up. Now that we have both of them done, we are going to be adding our jump rings, one to each end, and all you do is open it up and attach it to the little hole that is on here. Because I was coming in and out of frame, I'm going to do a second one where it's all in frame. And this is a part where while your jump ring is open, you would attach your lobster clasp. I didn't do that. I did end up having to reopen the jump ring and attach it that way it's fine it's not that big of a deal this part is very easy but it's important if you want it to open and close um, you're pretty much attaching the same thing that a bracelet or a necklace would have this is what's going to again make it easy for me to hang it on my rear view mirror Now we are going to be attaching our four strands. They are folded in half, so it is going to give us eight um, hanging strands off of this loop. We are going to attach them using a lark's head knot. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and you're just pretty much gonna loop them through. This is a very basic knot. You're going to do them to all of them. You're going to see me struggle because I did some in the reverse order, so I had to take them on and off several times. So enjoy watching me make several mistakes here just kidding i'm not gonna make you sit through that because this took way longer than i hate to admit but here it is all of them attached in the proper order and the proper way okay so in order for me to show you better i have hung it up here on my wall so that it doesn't wobble around as much and so that i can show you how i'm making the knots better now because this is hanging um it naturally already has a curve so i'm going to stay with the pattern of the curve that it naturally creates the knot that i'm doing today i'm going to do the same one throughout the entire thing to keep it as simple as possible and again i'm going to keep this a natural shape i'm going to be telling you as i'm doing it ask me any questions if you have any down below the angle may be a little bit weird in my hand movements because i am literally standing in front of my tripod to try and show you um ooh, sorry so let's do this um we are going to make a knot across this entire piece of the macrame cord and then i'm going to do another one going this way like this so i'm going to create continuous knots in those directions so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this which is going to be the center piece and i'm going to lay that out in front so i'm going to grab the one directly behind it and what i'm going to do is i'm going to loop it forward so it's going forward and through so it's going to go through the little loop that we create and you're going to pull tight so that it creates this little um i call it a donut in my mind that's how it makes sense and then in order to close it off we're going to do this again so we're going to grab the one that was behind it we're going to loop it forward and through 
and then we're going to bring it tight and right next to it. So now you have this little piece coming out of it. Now we are going to move on to the next one moving that is behind it. And we are going to loop it forward and through. So I'm going to put it through here. Again, I'm trying to keep everything on camera so the angles are weird. And then I'm gonna bring it directly next to this one in order to close it off. I am going to again bring it forward and through. And anytime I am doing macrame, I say exactly what I'm doing in my head so that it all makes sense and so that I don't make any mistakes. The good thing is that macrame is very forgiving. If you do something wrong, you can just take it apart. Just be cautious that your ends can become frayed. Okay, so now we're going to continue with the next one behind it, and we're going to again bring it over and through, and pull tight. Now, if this was straight, it would be right there underneath it, so I would just be making the knot so that it keeps a diagonal pattern because this hangs it naturally has that pattern okay to close it I'm going to bring it over and through and pull it tight and you can kind of tell where this is already leaving a little bit of a space and that's what I mean by doing the diagonal pattern um, it's going to be leaving different spacing up top and then the next one you'll just continue under it so now we're going to do it over on this side and we're going to do the same so this is going to be the center one so we're going to win bring the one behind it over so you see it's over the center one and we're going to loop it through and again it's going to create this little donut right there and in order to close it off we're going to do the same we're going to bring it over and we're going to loop it through and the first couple of knots are always the ones that are the hardest and look a little weird so all you have to do is just mold them into the direction and place that you want okay so then again this is the center one i'm going to bring the back one over over and through i'm sorry if my hands covered you throughout the entire last knot so we're going to do the same i'm going to bring it over and through to finish off finish off this second one sorry my hands get tired because i am in a weird angle okay again this is the center one so we are going to loop it over and through pull tight and we're going to do it again to close it off over and through okay so there we have the first row but we want to attach these two together so using the same center one we're going to do this one which is the center one from over here as the back piece so we're going to loop it over and through and to close it off we're going to loop it over and through Oops, once more so now this one will have an extra one so this is one two three this one has four one two one two three four and that'll allow us to keep the same pattern so i'm going to do the same i'm going to do it all through here do this one take the center which is now going to be this one and make the same type of knot so i'm going to repeat it on the other side again i'm going to do it at this normal speed and i'm going to talk through it so that again it makes sense for you okay this is the center one i'm going to loop over and through pull on this one so that I don't lose it again keeping right under this one because I already established my shape and then again I'm gonna loop it over and through hopefully it's showing up because I wasn't watching what was coming up okay center one over and through 
bring it close and right under this row. Again, loop it over and through second time to finish off, bringing it right next to it and right under our first row. And now the center one has become our last one for this row. So we are going to loop it over and through. And to close it off, we're going to loop it over and through. Okay, so now you can see how now this one is connected to this one where they match and now we're gonna do the same over here. And again, we're going to take the center one over and through, over and through to finish it off. And now we've established our pattern. I'm going to do probably two or three more, um, but I'm gonna do it off camera just so that it's easier. Actually, no, I'm gonna do it on camera, but it's gonna be at a different angle so that I have proper work area. And here it is with four rows completed. I am going to be stopping here. Um, with these four rows, you can really see the shape of it take place and it's not too long because again, it's going to be hanging from my rear view mirror. Now, all you have to do is trim the bottom, always cut longer than what you think you're going to need because it is easier to trim off more than to have to add back on. And here's the entire length that I have it at right now. I am going to now be unraveling the ends. These are very easy to do and I'm just going to go ahead and do it for each one of the strands. Here it is unraveled, so it actually revealed a little bit more length. So I'm going to trim it down even further, and I'm going to trim it down at an angle. Um, again, I can't have this be too long because it hangs from my rear view mirror. I can't have it be a distraction to me as it swings along and as I'm driving. And at this point, you can go ahead and leave it like this with this unraveled look, but I'm going to unravel it even further and I do prefer this look even better. I went ahead and trimmed down a little bit more. And the way that I did this is I did it with a needle or a fine tooth comb to achieve this exact same look. And I do prefer this option much more than the first one. Now this DIY is actually a very easy, but it does take some practice. Even for me that I've done it a couple times now, there's times where I have to undo it and redo it. So don't feel bad if it doesn't look perfect the first time, just take it apart and start all over. And that's it for this video. But before I leave, I do want to apologize because my fingers and my nails are so dirty in this video. And it is because I was working with some wood stain and it never fails. 
I make a mess of it. But don't worry, it's worth it. I have a really cool DIY that I'm going to be sharing soon. Despite that, I do still hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I did creating it for you. As always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, hit the notification bell so that you're notified every time that I post a new video. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with family and friends. Thank you and have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.